Today's question, does a Chinese surplus SKS, or any SKS for that matter, make for a viable home defense option? I think in many cases it can, but let's talk about that some more. Welcome back to the channel. Well, it has been quite some time since I've been out here to the range. At least three or four months or so since uh, everything going on and whatnot. But today I decided that it would be a good day to make a video that I've been uh, thinking about and wanting to do for a while. And that is another video on the SKS here. Now I wanted to do this video months ago, but the range here, it's a lo my local FOP range, it was decided by the powers that be that out of an abundance of caution, they were gonna shut the range down while the state was shut down and quarantined and whatnot. Because if you're gonna catch or spread anything, Lord knows it's out here all by myself on an empty range. But it's back open. Put you back on the tripod here, it's back open. And we can come out here and practice and shoot and have fun. And on the more serious side, train. But back to why we were out here today. The SKS. These were very popular back in the 90s. And they're very popular still today. Uh, before the AR-15 and AK variants really became popular for the home defense crowd and preppers and whatnot. And just target shooters in general. This was something that you could easily find anywhere, oftentimes for less than $100. As I mentioned before, I remember going into pawn shops and gun stores uh, with my dad when I was a kid, and you'd find these most commonly with the uh, spike bayonet, not the blade. You'd find these uh, hanging on the wall for like $69, and you'd get a case of ammo for about the same price, $69, $70, $75, whatever. The supply of these has kind of dried up a bit. There are a few back in the country now for sale. They're exponentially more than they were before. So for home defense, especially if you live in a banned state, you get 10 round fixed magazine here. Although you can bubble one of these up and put you know, 20, 30 round, whatever in it. One thing I like about it, it is very easy to load. Whether it be manually, or with stripper clips. Boom. 10 rounds. Now, I did kind of flub that, if you will. I have found that you can push about five in, and you gotta let up a little bit, then you can push the rest. Some people with some ammo, some stripper clips, if I had a glove on and wasn't really worried about cutting my finger on the back of this thing, its edges are sharp. So home defense, you got a variety of ammo. Great home defense tool. Uh, you do want to be uh, cautious of over penetration in, in some cases. But 10 rounds, let the bolt go home, you're ready to go. Uh, today I've brought a couple boxes of Wolf Military Classic. This is 124 grain full metal jacket. Uh, the stuff I put in there, I'm not really sure. It's this stuff here. Uh, it's got the red red seal on it, with bullet and the primer and all that good stuff. I bought these from uh, my local gun store, new gun store, and the guy was selling these for like three dollars or so on the stripper clips. And I was thinking, well, I don't really need ammo. I mean, you can always need ammo, but I did need some stripper clips. So I was like, sure, I'll take three of these. So I got me three of those, got some ammo on them, and also. Right before the world collapsed, I bought some of this stuff. Whole case of it. Now, AK and 7.62x39 aficionados will notice the 8M3 projectile on here. 
This is 124 grain hollow point, sealed primer and case neck, steel case, non-corrosive stuff. So good stuff right here. World goes down, that's what I'm loading up on. Now contrary to what is believed by some people, that these old surplus SKSs and even AKs, they're just not accurate, you can't hit anything. Now granted, I'm just shooting at about 20, 25 yards here. I would go further back and shoot, but it's still not that much, maybe about 90. And it's morning, the grass has dew all over it, it's wet, and I'm wearing my tactical flip-flops, and I don't wanna get my feet wet and nasty. But I have had this out on my buddy's uh, farm where we've shot 275, 300 yards, I think is what we measured it at. Or Alpha Dynamics AK, perfect, every shot. This, with just these crude iron sights, most, I would say about 90% of the shots landed on target on my steel torso. So they are not an inaccurate weapon, given that you have a good barrel. Some of these, you might get the barrels been shot out. This one looks brand new. It's a 57, 58 model, I believe. It still shoots great. Another thing I really like about this gun and the function of it, last round, the bolt's gonna stay back. Now you're not changing magazines or anything, but you feel that different recoil impulse. And with 10 rounds, you can count easily. So you can have your surplus Chinese bandolier on with loaded up with stripper clips. You can be ready, grab one, punch it in. There's another plus. And let's say, oh no, you've expended all your ammo. What are you going to do now? You don't have a backup pistol? Well, you have a bayonet. So you can take care of whatever you need to take care of with that and call it a day. But you shouldn't need your bayonet because you got your trusty 45 with you. America. And another thing that I particularly like about this gun, particularly the Chinese model, the Yugo has a little rubber butt pad on the back, but you do have a nice little short length of pull. I like that. This is about the same length of pull that I would have on my AKs or that I would set on my ARs. Get a nice cheek weld there. Get that on the sides real good. One other plus, always get your cleaning kit with you. Cleaning rod, brushes and whatnot. So if you get pinned down by enemy zombies in your back 40, you can always make sure you have a clean rifle. So thanks for watching this fun, not very informative educational video on the SKS as a home defense tool. It's great to be back out here in the range after a few months. Stay tuned for more because we've got a lot more coming. Thanks for watching.